Jim Farmer, Georgia Boys. Hi, Jim. Hey, Billy. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. I enjoy the film. Thanks so much. Thank Thanks you. How did the project come up? Somebody called my manager and offered me the gig, child. Great. <laughs> That's how it came up. <laughs> okay. Um, did you know much about this story beforehand? I didn't know that it was uh, based on a true story. I did not. Even when okay. I read it, I didn't know that it was based on a true story until after I read it. Have you, have you ever worked with any of these amazing women, Sally Field, Jane Fonda, Rita Moreno, um, Lily Tomlin? I have now. <laughs> I hadn't before, but I have now. What's it like being on a set with all these amazing actresses, iconic actresses? Um, you know, it's a dream. You know, these ladies, as a, as a, as a, as a um, student of the arts, you know, I, these, these actresses have been inspirational to me for a very long time. Not mm -hmm. just the work, you know, on screen, but also, you know, their lives off screen, the, the philanthropy, the, the activism, mm -hmm. the engagement with community, all of those things so publicly, you know, have, were really such a blueprint for me in terms of how I understood how to show up once I got my opportunity to be in this space. Okay. Um, and so I never dreamed that I would, you, you know, be in a movie with any of them, let alone all of them at the same time. <laughs> you know, it was magical. Exactly. What can you tell me about Gugu? Gugu is fabulous. Gugu is a highly sought after um, uh, director, choreographer of, you know, huge stadium shows, be it Michael Jackson or, you know, Janet Jackson or Lizzo or Lady Gaga. You know, I imagine Madonna, I imagine he's, you know, the 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 master of those kinds of shows at least in my mind's eye that's how i played it <laughs> yeah um I, I saw this film last night on a computer um I, I can't imagine what it's like to see this with an audience have you had the opportunity to see this with an audience yet i have not seen it with an audience and i'm looking forward to doing that i'm sure this will be amazing you know th there's billy there's such a stigma uh, about aging in our community, especially with Hollywood. But you know, this is a film where you have these four amazing people, four actresses, and they're also vital and strong and funny, and they're surrounded by people like you. I mean, can you talk about the importance of having a film like this? Yeah, there's no, there, it, it, it reminds people that there are no time limits to your dreams. Yeah. And continue to live your life to the fullest. It's not over. Till the wheels fall off. Ride your life till the wheels fall off. And I think, you know, I know that like that kind of representation matters because when you see it actively, one can then filter that in, in our bodies. Um, I hope it's inspiring and encouraging. I think a lot of people are really gonna like and appreciate this film. Are you much of a sports fan? No, not really. You know, when the Steelers or the Pirates are winning, I'm, you know, I pay attention a little bit because I'm from Pittsburgh and that's what we do. Um, but it was so lovely to, you know, somebody said earlier, this is the gayest sports film ever made. And um, I agree. And I feel like it's such, it sort of cracks open um, such an, a, a subversive conversation in a, in, in a way that we need right now mm -hmm. to remind, you know, because there's a dehumanization happening in the world right now. Um, and this, this film reminds, reminds everybody that we're all human. And, you know, the only healing is through love.
Exactly. Um, as a gay man, I mean, obviously, there's such an amazing cast here, but why do you think that this film is going to appeal to gay audiences? The four above the title actresses. It's like Golden Girls meets bridesmaids, bridesmaids on crack. It's gay, 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 gay. All the icons, darling. Exactly, exactly. Another takeaway that I had from this is I think this is so much about extended family. And, and as gay people, LGBTQ people, we can all relate to that. Can you speak on the fact that there, there is such an, this film embraces extended family and being around people who just get you and know you? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a chosen family movie. And, and um, you know, it's a ride or die movie. And I don't know of anybody who can live without that kind of unconditional love. And it doesn't come, doesn't always necessarily come from blood relatives. You know, very often it comes from the people and the energies that you choose to be in your life, that you curate to be in your life. Sure, when did you all film this? Last year, around like April, I think. March, okay. March or April. After, after, you know, almost two years of, of, of non-activity in COVID, what was it like being able to film again and be with all these people and not have to just wait around till the, till the virus was, was better, till the climate was better? Yeah, it was, it, it's the life's blood, it's breath, it's oxygen, it's, you know, joy again, it's hope again. It's, it was great. It was really great. I, I've been following your career for so long, but I mean, you know, from Broken Hearts Club to Kinky Boots on Broadway, but I mean, I, I, I pose change everybody's life so much. Your life, it changed TV. Can you just sort of talk about the importance of Pose on your career and how it changed the face of TV and what we can now expect from TV? Yeah, I lived through the AIDS crisis. Yeah. I'm 53 years old. I've been HIV positive since 2007. Mm -hmm. I always wondered why I survived. I had survivor's guilt for a really long time. And then Pose came along. And it was clear to me, you know, I always knew that there was a calling on my life, my art is my ministry, you know, all of that stuff, I've always known that. But it was Pose that sat me in the center of that calling, mm -hmm. of that intention, of that ministry. You know, it's not traditional. I grew up in the church. I use ministry. That's our language. It's a ministry. Um, as you can see, I'm, sp I'm still speechless. And it happened, and it's over. <laughs> Three seasons have happened, and it's over. But the fact that my community was finally seen yeah. in the mainstream has cracked open a different kind of conversation. Sure. You know, it's cracked open a space where we're no longer, you can no longer unconsciously or unknowingly dehumanize us. We're I human know, so. beings. Exactly. And, and thank you for that. Billy, I, I know so many people who, when they saw Pose, said they finally saw themselves and, you know, accurately portrayed for the first time. When I was growing up, you know, back in the 70s, 80s, there was very little representation, and when you saw representation, it was it was tragic, and people had to die. What 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 were the first times that you remember seeing positive portrayals of the LGBTQ experience growing up? I didn't. Yeah, I didn't see any positive portrayals of the LGBTQ plus uh, community growing up. I was already grown when Will and Grace came on the air, and they didn't really have no black people on that show, so I didn't yeah. even see myself on that. 
you know, I saw myself to a certain point, but like, it still wasn't just me. <laughs> me. Exactly. You know, um, so I'm so grateful to be at the forefront of that change in this world. You know, the change has happened and we have to celebrate that. There's been a lot of change. I couldn't sit here in front of you as the, as the person, the artist, the human being, the trailblazer, blah, 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 whatever you want to call it. I couldn't sit here if change hadn't already happened. Exactly. I want to congratulate you on your segue into directing. Can you sort of talk about that aspect of your life? Yeah, I've been directing a long time. I've been directing in the theater for over 25 yeah. years. So, you know, the magical space of being able to direct and film and TV has been so beautiful. And the reason why I wanted to do it is for the reason that we were just talking about, which is, it, which is somebody to represent us. Somebody to tell our story who knows our story. Because that's the other part that is really difficult. It's like what I found earlier in my life, it's like, well, okay, so you want to tell a queer story, but there's nobody queer in the space to tell it. So now you're telling it wrong. Let's stop doing that. You know, and I was waiting around for somebody else to do it for a long time, and I realized, oh, maybe it should be me. The audacity to think, oh, maybe I should write it and direct it and, you know, so it's just, I love it. I love it. I love anything is possible. Thank you so much. I have to ask you about this. I live in Atlanta. I remember um, hearing a few years ago about you and Tiffany Haddish um, <laughs> going to Swing and Richards together. I, 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 can't, I can't imagine the gay men in Swing and Richards, what they did when you and Tiffany walked in. What, what, are, your, what are your memories of that night with Tiffany hanging out with Swing and Richards and... <laughs> Swingin' Richards was fun. <laughs> so we were both sort of celebrities. I didn't even know about it. We were, I didn't know what Swingin' Richards was. We were at, it, this is a funny story, actually. We were at rehearsal for, there was a dance number at the end of um, Like a Boss. And so we were at rehearsal for this dance number and Tiffany came over. She's like, you going to Swingin' Richards with me tonight? We going to Swingin' Richards? And I was like, I don't know what Swingin' Richards is. And she's like, bitch, your gay ass don't know what Swingin' Richards is? I don't believe that. <laughs> we went to Swingin' Richards. We had such a good time. And you know, I was, she was, she's, you know, she's naughty, as the British would say. She's very naughty. Um, I can be naughty too, though. I'm not gonna lie. It was fun. Oh, great. Uh, Billy, it was an honor talking to you. Congratulations to Eddie for Brady. Congratulations on your amazing career. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thanks so much.